Um, I'm um, I'm going to start doing Pac-Man, and I was talking to OSK about it, and I'm actually going to change my approach slightly. Um, when we did, when he did Neptune Lander, he started off with basic, and it went then to machine code. I'm going to do the same now because um, I'm getting there with the Pac-Man, but I um. I find a lot of it is overwhelming. So what I figured I could do is write it in basic. It's not going to be the fastest, but it will work. And then use that and try and get the structure right to convert it into machine language. And that's my aim now. Um, now the other thing I need to do is go on to <laughs> and a lot of people don't do stuff in basic, so I figured it would make sense to try and um, make sense for me to try and um, you know do it this way as well instead. See if uh, see if I can get this working right. Um, so glad there's no one in the chat room. It's the way I like it. I don't normally broadcast on a day today, which is good. And yeah, we're going to go from here. So hopefully, this will just be a nice, quiet broadcast. So we're going to do Pac Man. Let's go into projects. Um, basic first. And then ASM. Um, okay, create. So this is AJ's um, CBM program Studio 4. Oh, somebody has joined. Look at that. Hello, Faroy. Um, you're not going to like this. This is all basic stuff today. So um, uh, I'm writing Pac Man in basic. Um, with a view to convert this to machine language. Um, now I've still got the sprites from the old one, um, which I don't know if I can view them in something else. Um, oh, it's, I can view them. I can, um, I'll be able to view them in sprite, in the sprite monitor, because I think I did them for I think I did them in this. Um, Kitty Cat. Oh, Pac Man. Uh, yes. So I'm going to use these sprites. Um, poss probably. Um, these are eight characters high. The reason for doing eight characters high is when I use a character, I'm going to be making it in basic using a character and. Um, I'll be able to superimpose a sprite onto that character so it doesn't move off of that lane and that means I should be able to get the lanes and the walls right. Um, and then I can look to increase the sprite but worst case scenario I think I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. this is seven characters high so um, we'll see how it goes. But that's the intention for that and I think I already, and I already have the screen done as well. Um, it's going to take a bit longer to do um, to run because of the um, <sighs> because of the uh, yeah have to change the characters and all that blah de blah but um, I'm not really fussed about it looking pretty. I might just use a reverse. In fact, I will use a reverse square. So. Um, basic long long time um i think it's um clear yeah uh, oh yeah oh, that's okay um okay so yeah 
it's just remembering everything how to do this so um we'll leave that as 100 um so we want to um uh rem main loop uh go sub um something uh colon rem um set up uh show screen and actually this would be going before the main loop so um Because once we've got the main loop, and then say 300, go to 200. Um, so the main loop, uh, setting up the screen. Now I wonder if I can, um, let me open up. Let me open up my earlier my other versions of Pac-Man and ignore I don't know what that is perfect screen one oh um This one then. Yeah, this is a bug in um, version four, so it's showing. Um, it should be a black black background. Um, showing it as blue I don't think that should change now although well, having said that it says oh yeah the character color is that so maybe I shouldn't use four because you can't see although having said that doesn't mean that I can't it means it's still there um generate empty rows and generate the whole row okay okay so copy to clipboard and close and then open my project which is Pac-Man and then in here so um poke 53280 comma naught comma poke 53281 comma naught and then um It won't give me anything. I've just realised. 190. Goes of 100. 1000. And then. Um, Brilliant. Oh, that's to do with the character rewrite. Um, we can leave that as a space.
This is perhaps why Oh, I forgot about Shalom. Hi, Andy. Oh, you, you should be with Shalom. Um, I, I, uh, sorry, I was, I've, I use custom characters. So this is, um, I'll quickly show you what I had done. Um, I hate basic. Um, so... Pac-Man. I think version 2 was the furthest I'd got. If I run that, um, I have a custom character set and uh, so there's Pac-Man. Oh, um, interesting. What if I stopped it? What was on version one? Oh, Wong, F5, F, no, it's F5. And then we should run that at 100. Yeah, so this was um, this is how I had it originally, and I was using uh, looking at using multicolor, um, and yeah, I had it moving around, picking up the um, but you see, it's not quite all in line to make it work um, and that's why um, I was trying to go back to more basics yeah so with um, as as Andy said, when you write stuff now for the um, in basic, um, we don't have the character codes, um, and well, we do if you have the original. So what it does is it uses that to do the the blue command. Um, it uses pound, which is would be shown for the red. Um, and you can type in um, like this one clear is a clear screen and um, if I uh, can't end if I run that it will load it it will stop it after it's cleared the screen and then when I list it do you see you've got still got the original characters in there um, this is for the color red. Although having said that, I'm not sure that's right. should be that should be red like that oops um that pound isn't being interpreted correctly in basic because we got pound and then white, and the white is correct. Um, so, maybe I won't bother 
with displaying the screen for the moment. Um, um, oops, screen is here, and then uh, what I probably could do is go print and then um, control reverse. No, what was reverse on? It was. is used in VS Code. There is a list in here. Oh, what was it? Screen code, screen code builder. So there's reverse on. So if I want Commodore, no. Shift, no. Control. Control reverse on and then control reverse off. So red is pat. Oh. Where does pound come in then? Oh, so pound isn't red. Although I think red is the symbol of a pound. Can't remember. So it is reverse on and reverse off. Um, CBM Studios, um, yeah, there's um, C64 Studio, I think is another one. Um, I think that's the other one that supports his... Um, I think that, or maybe that doesn't support basic. Oh, 
Oh yeah, you can. Yes, it does. Um, this is very active um, in terms of uh, fixing <laughs> faults. Um, and I suppose there's no reason why I couldn't use that. Um, but yeah, they're really the only two that I'm aware of that you could write basic in and chuck it in. I don't think we can use VS Code. Could be wrong. Oops. So we've got um, interesting. It's not printing anything. Got the home. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because I left um. It's funny how you forget things. Ah, oh, brilliant. One too many spaces. So that will be, take that one off. And then run that. Well, at least you should give me a... Twenty-three, twenty-two, um, twenty-two. Actually, zero to twenty-one. I'm surprised you would want to stay here. It's absolutely boring. Um. Anyway, you might have nothing better to do. Um. So got a screen, put Pac-Man on it, um, now Pac-Man is going to be, um, it's a character, tools, screen code builder, I want to use that guy, I want to use him, Where is my little friend? No. Where's my man? Um, I don't know what. And that's crashed it. Um. <laughs> Character. Screen device display code. There we go. I'll do him. Hi, where's Pie Man? Ninety four. Close that. Ninety four. No, it's either. Yep, 94. So, um, uh, pack. Um, so we're going to do the, um, so the loop is going to be get string. direction so this is um um equal oops equals zero um zero equals up one equals down two equals left three equals right so um, 
we can okay, okay so I can do that and then we've got um, px equals zero pack x pos px py equals zero and that'll actually will make that um, 20 12 that puts them dead center of the screen um, okay oh I don't know if I need 130 um, up is um, I use S if a string equals X then px equals px plus one. If a string equals then p oh this is wrong fucking hell. This is y and this is px. If a dollar equals then px equals px plus one. Now I can do it so it's always moving but I'm not going to because um, all I would do then if I wanted to keep it moving all the time is just set PY to be minus one and then on the loop um, uh, get it to just continually add or subtract um, But for we're just testing for this. Um, so if p x smaller than one or p x is greater than thirty nine, then to undo it oh no okay um now we'll do the um so we'll make that xx uh, y y equals minus one. Y y equals one. X x equals minus one. X x equals oops. So if p x plus x x or p x plus x x greater than 39 then forget about it then um then two then three oh we'll go to the next what will be 300 and then we do the same for if py so that gives me the boundaries It's not, it's going to be greater than 23. So now we do, so now we don't care. So now we know it's okay. Px equals Px plus xx, column py equals y, um, py plus yy. So now we've got the new coordinates, and then we want to. Do the opposite in a minute. Poke um, 1024 plus 40 times PY plus PX, comma. It's not an X. 
X is it? It's star, comma, uh, 94. And then, actually, no, I should do it. Um, again, I'm not worried about the flickering. So if I copy that and put it in there, I'll put that as 32, which is a space. So before we add it, that will change the character to a space. We should have some basic movement. Interesting. Okay. So that should be 38, that should be 22, and I don't know why. I do know why. Okay. I know why that is. And then here, um, xx equals naught, colon yy equals naught, and that will reset them. So that just gives me up and down. Yep. Ship it. <laughs> I do need to clear xx, yy. So we've got a boundary. Oh, interesting. Oh, it won't go up and down when it's at the border. But this is meant to be for someone else, so um, it's not like real again. So I've got Pac-Man moving. I do need to get a map. Should be two nine five, and and it, it is thirty nine. If I do great, they're not equal, and that'd be twenty three. If I do great, then or equal to. So I'll stop it doing its weird stuff when I first come out of perfect. So now I need to I wonder if I should poke the stuff onto the screen, the map. Um, ghosts. I 
What's the ghost you're going to be? Um, I think it might be 64. Oh no, I've met the ghost then. Um, 88. Now then, we got to dim. Uh, ghost Y, 4. So we've got the X and Y positions of them. And then I think I'll have to go to G, A, X, uh, 4, comma, G, B, 4. So we've got um, ghost X, Y, um, X movement and Y move and that's what they're going to be for so So two thousand. Um, oh, get a uh, dollar. Go on, if a dollar equals uh, then two thousand. That gives me my user input to change randomness. And I think um, we set it on the time. And I can't remember. Um, so that minus TI, I remember. God, blimey. Here we go. Oh. So, um... I really can't remember. Do you know random? Brave will know it. Um. Random. It's a random number generator. So in in, in um, assembly. Um, you can use a time, but the easiest way is to use um, the noise waveform generator. And I've done on one of my videos about um, setting up that. The problem is that um, it's pseudo random. So whilst it is a random number, sorry, normal random numbers in the Commodore are random, uh, are, are pseudo random, um, except when using the waveform generator for noise. Um, and when you use an emulator, everything is pretty much set to be the same. So if I always, um, I'll show you. If I, uh, uh, random test, uh, rename, uh, random, I did a thing on this. 
So um, x equals i and t colon r comma r o bracket r and d one times a hundred. And we'll just leave it at that. Print x. Um, if I run that, it's going to give me a number. Oh, fucking hell. 10. 20. Oh. Eighteen. Okay, so we've got a random number of eighteen. I'm gonna close it down, rerun it. Oh it's eighteen again. I'm gonna close it down, rerun it, and it'll always be eighteen. And this is the problem with random number generators um, inside um, emulators. Um, it won't change from that. So um, you can alter the seed by using the um, uh, uh, change R&D seed to C64. I think you can use a time or oh, one of this. I don't know if this has got it in here. By right, x equals uh, minus ti. So that basically puts the because it's pseudo random. We've got a set of predefined numbers. The minus ti changes it based on the time. Now I could do that. Um, now he they've got it as um, x equals minus ti and then they say print random so we're going to do exactly the same but instead of doing it as a formula we'll just go print um, int rnd 1 times 100 oops so that should give me a number between 0 and uh, uh, 99 uh, 100 and 1 um, because that plus one adds one onto it. Oh, it, okay, I didn't know that. I thought it was, um, they said it's, uh, I'm not entirely sure that's correct, but um, we'll go with it. Um, so that'll be between one and a hundred, um, based on the time. Now, if I run that, we won't get 18 this time, but we will get another number, 88, and we run it. 88. So it doesn't work. Because it's always pointing to the same point in... Oh, behave. Something took longer to start up. Thank you. So what you can do is you put human intervention in place. Get a string. How long if a dollar equals then five? So it's just waiting for a key press. When I run that, it won't do anything. Um, it's waiting for me. Now I'm getting a different number. And then if I um, obviously if I rerun it within the program, it'll always be different once I'm in there. But the numbers are always going to be when you start up a game they'll always end up being in the same plane so different number because it's waiting for me and I give it that um, randomness now and that's what you should do if you want to do randomness within an emulated game oh I've not seen this Oh, there you go. So this is, uh, that's just basically saying what I've just said. Um, Uh, 
don't know. Um, but um, anyway, what I've said is correct in that it will always make that number properly random. Um, and I did that when, it's the same with the machine language. Um, when you do machine code on an emulator, you'll still get pseudo um, you'll get the same sequence of random numbers. So um, I can close that. So um, that's why I've put that one in for the 2000. So now we've got that, um, I can say we need to randomly generate four numbers, um, X and Y's, um, four, uh, Z equals one, two, four. Um, Q equals int R and D open bracket one times thirty-eight plus one. And that gives me um, that gives me an X position. Um, colon um, uh, we've got the ghost. GX bracket Z equals Q. And then I can do exactly the same again um, and make it Y. And that'll be times 22. So now I've got the four X and Ys of the ghosts. And that's all I need. So that's um, the go sex wise done. Now I could probably move that into let's make that four hundred. That can be 300, that'll be 300, 300. So 310, go sub, um, move. Oh no, I can't do that, can I? Can't go sub, move sprites. So I'll put 2100. Now, um, Now there's things we need to do about the ghost. Every we need it to change direction, but every so often try and go for the um, go for him. So X and it should always aim for where where his the X and Y is of the um, of the ghost. But for the moment we will um, Q equals. We'll, not, we'll, we'll just get them moving. Um, poke. Same bit of maths. But here it's going to be GB bracket Q plus GA. And the ghost is GH. No, it's not, it's 32. And then we are going to introduce a random movement. Which is gonna be um might as well do W equals INT times four plus one gives me one to four. Um, on W, K 
go to 50, 21, 70, 21, 90, 22, 10. I don't know what the, um, so 21, 50 is going to be, if it's 1, yes, yeah, for the, um, I did the, um, sorry, I, I did see, I did say about the random, um, thing I did do a video on it and C64 um Oh, I'll tell you what, I have got it, I have done it. Um, I've done it in in my um, in Bomber. In this one. Oh no. In this one. And I think I might have done the code in here directly. I did. Um, yeah, so this is the. Uh, this starts it up. And then when I want to call it. Um, that's the generator. when you want to call it oh here it is DC00 I'm sure that is it because you set up you set it up and then you, then you, when you call it, oh no, it's not that. Um, routines. I think it's in my routines. Oh, it was that. It was that. I think that starts the gen the generator, and then when I wanted to. There it is. Right, it's because I so I run that when I first started. Um, so that when I did it on Bomber, I made it. You had to wait. It you it wait for you to press it. I don't know if it. it can't remember if it. The, if you in, uh, displayed instructions or something, but you had to wait for user input. Um, then it called the start the right the the uh, random generate, which is the. Um, the uh, noise generator and then you literally um yeah you load a with dollar four one and that picks up the number and there is there is yes this is the so it's between zero and whatever that is in decimal um eight six um will be sixteen thirty-two sixty four it's one twenty eight one twenty eight one thirty one thirty four is the maximum number in that um 
if that that will be generated by the um one thirty four, not one twenty four, one thirty four. Um that's the highest number that it will be generated in that uh uh, by by this um, thing and we can alter that as well um, and you just literally um, you just make these a dynamic value so if you wanted to have something that was between 0 and 10 you would just literally put in in the code you would put that as something like um, uh, boo and then here you would have um, max say max high value for the random and then when you are doing that if you wanted to well we, we were calling a number somewhere um what was i calling it here so i want to generate a random number and i can't remember what it was um i could in here go um I want the numbers between up to it's not boob I just realized it's not boob it's smelly stuff yeah it's just the smelly stuff it's BO so here I would go um, I wanted a number, so I want it to be a maximum of, say, between uh, 10. And then I could go store that in this. Plus 1 because that's one, STA is one character, oh, sorry, LDA is one um, byte, and then the value would go into the next one, and that would dynamically change this as I needed it to be um, whatever I want, and so in this case, it would now change it to be between one and 10. So, um, yeah. Um. So, um, so where it currently is, we're turn we're turning we're putting it into be blank, which is what thirty two is, and then we are gxgy. G A and G B. So we want GA equals, no, 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 I don't, I think this is, um, I don't probably need that G, I probably don't need that G, A, hey, you Prince. Oh no, it's phase, isn't it? I'm sorry. I am writing a basic version of pac-man so i can try and get pac-man done properly in assembly by figuring out all the shit i need to do in basic first but especially the movement and then um oh i'm sorry thank you um i i um yeah i misunderstood um and then I can transpose it into into um, into uh, what is it called? into assembly. Um, the um, because I was I was having I was struggling to keep Pac-Man in the right bits. I can get it to detect a wall, but I couldn't get the math quite right whereas this way if I get all the movement done at, at a character level I can superimpose the sprite on top of that and then smooth scroll him between each one but I also have to do the the ghost stuff and um, so that's all I'm doing right now and I'm about to 
um, I haven't got it written down anywhere, but I'm about to just try and do the ghost movement. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm doing is right yet. But yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I hope you're well. Um, and I don't know what to do. So this is the old thing. This is determining the movement. Now I wonder if I could do it in. If I should do it in, I could do it in, in as a leap and do it one at a time. Yeah. So um, I don't think this is right. I don't think I need that. Oops. If W equals one, then Q A a Q Q B Q equals oops equals Q B No, if Q B Q plus W is greater than oh, that's why I need to do it on the on W. So twenty one forty is um if Q B plus W uh plus minus one because one is up is smaller than or equal to than one is smaller than one then forget about it, it's not going to move. Right, so uh, that's going to be 2142. thinking in my head whether I needed to have QA QA This is twenty three. I don't think I need that. Because we now check in all the plate, all the weight, all the um It's just going to check all four. I've just realised, and that's where. Um. Okay. 
twenty one fifty. Um So we're going to make this one go up. This is plus one. Three is left. trying to remember basic very and it's hard and four is right and then 22 will be the big poke poke 1024 plus 40 times GB open bracket Q plus Q A comma ghost oh that's it next return I can't believe it's that simple didn't break 170 for that goes up. Hmm. Oh, what, why is going what's going on with that? Q is two. Oh, 
Oh, it's not liking that return from the ghost sub. You idiot. I kept bloody misreading it. So that should be a Z then. So I'm using the consistency. You didn't spot that. So we've got Z1 to 4, that can now go back to being a go sub. Interesting, nothing's moving. Oh, for God's sake, it's GX, GY, so much wrong. GY, GY, oops, GY, GX. Now that I think in 
interesting that these two, they always seem to be starting in the same place. Going in the same direction. Now that's different. Now why is that not... There we go. Um, let's see if that now, if they are in a different place. This, yeah, this is where this is why it gets stuck. On W, go to twenty one forty, which is up twenty one forty two down. stop it getting stuck now. I don't know why I'm doing all this. Right, um, so the relationship with this is that um, when I do um, when I do the um, Pac-Man game where, the, where my little pie is is where I'm going to put the Pac-Man sprite. Um, I've been struggling with several things and I've been building Pac-Man I've been building Pac-Man mm, I wouldn't say ask about face but um I've struggled to get it in um, an er in a way that um, I can actually. I'm finding it difficult to keep it within the rows, and what I determined was, um, if I on this one put the pie character there and put Pac-Man on top of it, rather than putting the sprite on first, then figuring out where. The X and Y is, and then figuring out where the where the um, where the uh, walls are to stop them from going through. 
um, I'm more likely to get a better success because I can do it with a full character. The character can't go anywhere apart from in the X and Y within the things of eight. And so if I've got everything working with just characters, I can stick the ghosts on top. That was my thought process. So this works because I'm doing it really carefully. Um, and it won't go any higher. Now that should go a little bit higher. Um, and, and now it's st stuck a little bit and I have to sort of wiggle it about. And that's the bit, the mechanics of that, I can't get right. And that's just because I'm a bit stupid. So um, that's why I'm taking this other phase. Plus the fact um, I thought, and I thought because John did it with his Neptune lander, and that seemed to make um, make a difference. Um, when he when he copied it all across, I could follow all the mechanics um, apart from the sixteen bit stuff. So I thought, oh, it might be worth me um, just trying it out on, um, on uh, doing it in basic, um, getting that bit right. Um, because also I think the, the, the ghost, moving the ghost about was also a bit overwhelming for me. And what I was going to do, that's why I'm doing the ghosts in this one. Because um, I know roughly how I want them to work. In that they when they hit a wall they will move randomly. But every sort of three or four hits of a wall or every three or four checks it will start to come towards me. So they would sort of, that's I think how I would make them give chase. So the reason for me doing this is so that I can um, I can get the ghost moving on each and every move. Um, and once I've done this and I've got it to a state that I think, yeah, that's not so bad. I'll put in a basic maze and stuff. I can transpose that into assembly. And that's the purpose of the relationship between this and the actual game I'm intending to do. I hope that's okay. I hope that makes sense, I mean. Um, I don't know how. Yeah. So, um, that's where I am with that. So I'm going to leave that now. And, um, and yeah, and just go from go go from here, and I'll build it. I'm going to try and annotate it in a web page as well, so um, it makes sense to me, and I can maybe help somebody else. All right, so um, that's it, I guess. I'm at a point where I'm a good place to stop. So um, I'll bid you all good evening and um, chat to you soon, I guess. All right, trip.